Hello, welcome again to the lecture series on Control Systems Engineering. Let us continue in this session the discussions on signal flow graphs. We will work out few more examples. So here again, I have given a signal flow graph as discussed. You have to find the transfer function of this. So basically now, as per the Mason's gain formula, let us find out how many forward paths are there in this. This is one forward path. Again, start from R. This is the second forward path. And this one is the third forward path. Okay, there are three forward paths. So our equation becomes P1 delta 1 plus P2 delta 2 plus P3 delta 3 divided by delta. Okay, now P1 is the path gain and the first forward path. Multiply all the branch gains. P2 is the path gain of the second forward path and P3 is the path gain of the third forward path. Fine. Let us find delta 1 minus loop gains of individual loops. How many loops are there? Okay. This is one loop. This is second loop. So this is third loop. So this is fourth loop. And this is fifth loop. sixth loop okay this is seventh loop okay there is loop here also Like this, you have to trace the loops. <laughs> if you make a mistake in tracing out, I think it'll, the answer will be wrong. Similarly, so look at which are non touching in this. So, loop numbers what I have given there and here are different, and uh, two loops at a time you take which are non touching. This is one loop. This is another loop. Okay, like this. This loop. Again, not touching with this loop. Then Which other loop you have to see? So, 
then this loop and this loop they are not sharing common nodes like this you have to find them ok three sets right so now substitute the loop gains you will get your transfer function yeah right sir similarly you work out again as an exercise for you sometimes they give a block you will have a block diagram if you find reducing the block diagram is quite difficult you can instead of that you can draw the signal flow graph and you can find a transfer function so this is the block diagram given see r1 x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 c like this you can mark then r2 x1 x1 to x2 x2 to x3 x3 to x4 x4 to x5 x5 to x6 x6 to c then from c to x5 right then x4 to x1 right x6 to c x3 so like this now very easy this is the only forward path we have k equal to 1 t is equal to p1 delta 1 by delta so path gain is g1 g2 g3 4 delta is 1 minus sum of loop gains of individual loops okay this is loop 1 loop 2 loop 3 like this so you can write l1 l2 l3 okay delta equal to and there is one pair of non-touching loops this loop and this loop both this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 then l1 l3 and delta 1 is touching all the loops simply 1 so now and you know that p1 is nothing but g1 g2 g3 g4 okay so substitute you will get the answer right So same way. There is one more example. Mark this signals. So, sorry, nodes. Draw the signal flow graph. Then use Mason's gate formula and find the transfer function. Done. So there is another example like this. Okay, R 
x1 x2 first you mark here r x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 c so mark here and join them next of course there is a forward path g4 mark that this one x2 to c then x1 to you can say x4 correct always to the forward point then this is x5 to x2 and this one is c to x1 and here there is one more x4 so sorry here so you get your transfer function now okay so which are all the forward paths one forward path second forward path third forward path okay and there is one more which is that so let us look at where it is Can we go like this? Like this, like this, like this, like this. So I'm not touching any node twice. I think that's how you get this. Okay. So once you have the forward four forward paths then you can write this equation then write down p1 p2 p3 p4 then delta delta 1 all this right very good so then substitute you will get the transfer function so one more example here right you can the block diagram is given draw the signal flow graph identify the number of forward paths and find the values and do it here it must be very very tricky here why I have given such simple problems is look here there are four forward paths in this example that's why you have to carefully identify one like this another like this another this way another is this way that is where the trick is it looks simple but you need to be very careful correct in identifying the forward paths and the loops after that things are simple okay mm. so same way you can do it for multiple input and multiple output problems also so and now i think you must be familiar with as i have done many examples you should be able to draw signal flow graph for the given block diagram and find the transfer function now let me te teach you another uh, type of problem 
Suppose a mechanical system is given. Mechanical physical system. Earlier we know how to write differential equations for this. So now it is a two degree freedom problem M1. As I mentioned on M1, 1, 2, 3, plus 1, 4 forces are acting. Out of that, F of T is acting left to right. I'll show F of T left to right. Then this is all other forces I must show in the opposite direction. So F1, X1 dot fine, M1 X1 double dot fine and K1 X1 minus X2 right. Then if you look at this example 1, 2, 3 plus 1, 4 forces are acting. Mass is moving in this direction. All forces should oppose this motion. So it is K1 x2 minus x1 <coughs> then k2 x2 m2 x2 double dot and this is f2 x2 dot fine now let us write the equations so here you are getting m1 x1 double dot f1 x1 dot k1 x1 is equal to f of t plus k1 x2. So take the Laplace m1 s square f1 s plus k1 whole of x1 of s is equal to f of s and k1 x2 of s. You call this as let's say a. a x1 of s equal to f of s plus k1 x2 of s. Okay. So, x1 of s is equal to f of s plus k1 x2 of s by a. Or we can write x1 of s is equal to like this. Separating it out. Same way for the second mass m2 x2 double dot f2 x2 dot plus k1 plus k2 x2 is equal to k1 x1. So, I will take Laplace. I will get this. Let me call this as b now. Then I'll get B X2 of S. K1 X1 of S. X2 of S is equal to this. This is the equation I got. Now I got two equations. X1 is one signal. X2 is another signal. F of S is another signal. So F of S is an input signal. X1, X2. Okay. F of S went to 1 by A is equal to X1 of S. Fine x2 to x1 x2 to x1 i'll get this here x1 to x2 okay just to define output node you can extend with a gain of unity so there is only one forward path so k equal to 1 so t will become p1 delta 1 by delta Correct path gain is 1 by A, K1 by B, so K1 by AB. Delta is equal to 1 minus this loop K. Correct? That is 1 minus K1 squared by AB. Or you can write like this, AB minus K1 squared by AB. It is touching all the loops, so delta 1 is 1. Now P1 delta 1 by delta, if you substitute and substitute A value and B value, you will get your transfer function. So by signal flow graph method, also you can get this. You can solve these equations and get the transfer function. So it looks interesting. These are the ways we can model the physical system and obtain overall transfer function. So now you have understood how a physical system is given, how to use the physical law governing the system. For example, spring mass damper system, you use Newton's laws of motion. Electrical systems, you use Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law. 
<coughs> when you consider hydraulic system conservation of mass equation you create considered so also in pneumatic system in thermal system conservation of energy so using these basic class you can write the differential equations and you will get in all these cases linear time invariant differential equations using laplace you have got the tran laplace transform of the output to the laplace transform of the input you call this as transfer function so by directly solving the equation we could do that right then we used block diagram technique to get that overall transfer function we also explain i also explained how exactly signal flow graph method can be used and we can obtain the transfer function now something like this we have sorry Now, I have C of S by, in general, R of S is equal to something, right? For example, you can call this as X1 of S or X2 of S by F of S. Instead of writing that, I have writing this as, in general, say c of s by r of s that something is nothing but this transfer function if you have a transfer function like this then next what do we do next what we are going to do is c of s is equal to this transfer function I multiply with R of S. This R of S Laplace transform the input. I will identify different stimuli that is forcing functions. I will get their mathematical equations. Correct? Their mathematical models. Correct. Now, for this R of S, this R of S, I substitute that mathematical equation. This I multiply with this. Then it is whole thing is in Laplace form only. Now I split this into partial fractions. Take inverse Laplace and bring them to time plane. Then, sorry, time plane. Then I'll study, I will be getting C of T. That is how exactly the system responds with this respect to time for a given stimuli, given type of input. I try to study that. And what is that we do with that? We will see in the coming chapter. So, unless I have the transfer function, I will not be able to do it. So, suppose you are doing it's a vehicle dynamics or flight dynamics, it's all necessary to model these systems first. Or even electrical systems, you have to model. Unless you model, it's not possible to find out how system responds to a given stimuli. Okay, that is the idea of that. That is why we took, we have put in so much effort to learn how to find, how to model the systems. Hope this has given you an idea about modeling. Okay, let us stop at this point. Thank you very much.